My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. If not, you see why? You see why? The most corrupt place in this world right now the church is competing with the world yeah because sometimes we get so much of what we are looking for that we begin to relax on the agenda and the journey that we are running that is the journey of purity and righteousness that we are running with god there is a way you can hold the microphone, the spirit will come upon you. And you slept with the girl, but yet you start prophesying. Do you know, do you, anytime you say, God, use me, eh, you, are, you are entering into a, a very dangerous agreement that you have no idea. He can use you in your evil because he's using you to run his agenda. Because you presented yourself and said, God, use me. Right now, if you come to me and tell me, use me. I can use you in your imperfection to get something I'm looking for. That's why he said on the last day, they'll say, did we not use your name to prophesy? He said, I didn't know you. I only used you. I only used you. So the most dangerous place to be is the place of blessing. Many people get there and they fall. They start falling. I'm telling you. Many church leaders don't pray anymore. Because we have the skill to sustain services. There are pastors who are doing 14 days, 21 days fasting with the church. They don't do it. <laughs> they themselves are not doing it. Yeah. I can boldly tell you, that those who stand on puppet and say stop fornicating eh? <laughs> they are girlfriends you have no idea when you start getting results you are treading at a dangerous ground so God makes sure that he convicts your heart with this word so much before he lifts you anytime I see a genuine lifting of God over a man's life I've seen somebody who has been proven and tested that God knows that that lifting cannot take over the fulfillment of his word and the practicing of his word in that person's heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Spiritual giftings is not all there is to ministry. You must have a word in your heart that you are living by. The most pitiful people in this kingdom are those who are who, who stand and say, is God not using me? He, he will overuse you. But on the final day, you will suffer. I didn't come to sadden your heart. I came to tell you that the first agenda to extreme increase is to hide this word in your heart. For you are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore lay aside every sin that easily beset you and every weight that weigh you down. He said, run the race. Looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he said for ye even you have not strife against sin 
with your blood. He said, Jesus fought sin with his blood. He said, all you need to do is to look up to him and despise the shame and endure the pain in dealing with sin. Put aside everything that easily beset you. He said, Jesus resisted unto blood dealing with sin. He resisted unto blood. He said, look up to Jesus because you are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. Any serious believer, you don't have to read Hebrews chapter 12 from Bible. It must be in your heart. Hebrews chapter 12 is the center of your journey. He said there is a great cloud. And when you continue to read, he tells you that you have now been brought to Mount Zion. God is there. Innumerable angels. Saints whose spirit has been perfected. He said even the mediator Jesus is also there. He said that is the place you have come. He said therefore, put us you see he didn't tell you therefore keep preaching he said the first thing he tells you is deal with sin the cloud of witnesses will not be impressed with your preaching what preaching will you preach that apostle paul didn't preach what miracle will you work that is higher than the miracle elijah work so the cloud of witnesses including the angels and god himself are not impressed with the little things we are doing they are impressed when we are tempted at all point yet we do not sin so hebrews 12 captures only one thing the subject of sin and then he breaks the subject of sin that he deals with he breaks it down in the verse 14 for us be at peace with all men he said this one this one this part of sin be careful he didn't listen the great cloud of witnesses if you walk on water jesus will rise up he said i also walked if you part the sea into two moses will come if you disappear philip will come so what will you do if your shadow cast devils peter will show up so what will you do that will impress this man? And the only thing that is captured in Hebrews 12 that he said we should pay attention to is that we should lay aside every sin. Lay it aside. Those are the things that impress those immortals. They have been men before. So they know the very arrows against men. They knew their struggle. The struggle of Elijah was not to call down fire. The struggle was sin. The struggle of Moses was not to command frost to come. The struggle was sin. How that he got angry when he shouldn't get angry. His struggle was sin. So all of them are only impressed by one thing. When a certain child of God filled with the Holy Ghost is able to resist sin. And the only example that was given us in that chapter, the example is Jesus. That means all the cloud they have seen before. So he said, don't look at any of them. Look unto Jesus. He's the only one that resisted sin unto blood. He said, look at only him. Just look. Look at him. Look at him. Then he said, follow peace. I'm coming to show you the sin. You must be careful of he said follow peace with all men without which no man shall see the lord then verse 15 say looking diligently diligent he said observe this diligently can we read verse 15 looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness sprinkling up trouble you and thereby many be what defiled so one sin is singled out the sin of bitterness he said that looking diligently lest any man fail there is only one sin that can let you fail in grace bitterness bitterness he said he said Less any root of bitterness. I curse any root of bitterness in your heart. I said, I curse any root of bitterness in your heart. 
He said, any root of bitterness sprinkle up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Then he compares it to something. To Esau. Verse 16. Quickly. Read, read verse 16 together. I want to go. Lest there oh read it, read it powerfully. Want to go? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one muscle of meat sold his birth right. He said, Anybody that entertained the root of bitterness, grace will fail. And anytime you fail in grace, you are not different from Esau. Who for one muzzle of meat lost his birthright? Do you know the birthright of the, of the body of Christ? Do you know our birthright? Oh, who can shout it right now? Do you know our birthright? What's your birthright? Your birthright is grace. No other person is enjoying grace like you are. Unbelievers are not enjoying grace. You are. The Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Only those that believe in Jesus are enjoying the grace of Jesus. And he's saying that root of bitterness can let that grace fail. And anytime you become bitter, don't insult insult. You are equal to him. Anytime you become bitter about anyone, you are not different from Esau. He said, Esau exchange his birthright with meat so anytime you say i will i will never forgive this person i will never forgive this person you are you are like this so it's like you are changing you are exchanging meat with your birthright i will never forgive this person i will deal with this person you will deal with who anytime you say that you are exchanging that word with your grace and you know the grace of God. The grace of God is the help of God. So anytime you decide to punish somebody, God moves away. Then suddenly you are left alone. So all the people that want to deal with you, come and deal with you. Am I talking to a church here? The way you are looking at me, save today. The <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.